Hi friends, welcome to Crackers video series. In this particular video, I'll be discussing the Dashcat 8 analysis. So I took a blind attempt of LRDI and Quant. I first took of Quant and then I took of LRDI. And uh, based on my experience as a test taker, I'll be trying to analyze the uh, mock. Marathi uh, took a blind attempt of verbal, so he'll be analyzing the verbal section. So let's start with Quant section. So I felt that this was exactly CAT difficulty level in the sense that what you can reasonably expect in CAT, where the easier questions will come from, where the difficult questions will come from, it matched the same kind of layout, easy questions, some easy questions from arithmetic, some moderate difficulty questions from arithmetic, some easy from geometry, some moderate from geometry, difficult, moderate to difficult questions from algebra, moderate to difficult questions from number systems and other th kind of things. So I felt that this was exactly what uh, I have seen over the years in CAT. And there is also a big lesson over here that if you want to actually have, if you are struggling to score a base, uh, base uh, number of questions or solve a base number of questions in quant section, this should be what you should actually look at because these four easy questions plus these two easy questions from arithmetic and geometry, you should be grabbing. That six questions which are easy and which should be you had which should have been your first priority. Arithmetic and geometry should always be your first priority. Similarly, if you have done a lot of practice of arithmetic, these five questions would have also been within reach. So six plus five and you would have gotten 11 questions right there, which would have been nearly about I think 95 percentile cut off mark as such. So if you even target those kind of 11 questions, you'll be clearing the cutoff in actual CAT. So remember, one of the most important things to remember is that if you get the easy questions from arithmetic and geometry and the moderate questions from even arithmetic, it should have it should be enough to actually uh, uh, clear or be uh, nearly enough to clear the cutoff as such. From there, you have geometric moderate questions. You have questions from algebra that you can solve. There was one question from modern maths from logarithms which is solvable. So all of those one, two additional moderate difficulty questions you can then solve to take this 11 to like 16 where you will be comfortably clearing any kind of cutoff. So if you are looking, if you are struggling with quant, always remember focus and get very good at arithmetic and geometry that would be more than enough for you to clear the cutoff as such. Now let's take a look at the second part which is LRDI. So in LRDI I felt this was a hard section. I uh, maybe I am not that uh, properly in touch with the LRDI. I have not practiced LRDI section for quite a bit. I uh, sometimes Marathi takes the LRDI section sometimes I take it. So I thought maybe even I was slightly under prepared for it but even having said that I felt this was a harder section and I the reason why I feel that was harder section is because when you have 6 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, the ideal way that the target is basically try to do 6 plus 4 plus 4 and you have to, you can't basically do both 6 questions. You have to leave at least one 6 question and you have to, a base configuration is 6 plus 4 where you are very like uh, at the edge of clearing the cutoff and if you do 6 plus 4 plus 4, you are at the very comfortably clearing the cutoff. Doing the two six questions generally is firstly what will happen is that you will do only the two six questions. Doing another set after those two six questions is generally impossible. But essentially that would mean that you do both two six question sets or if you are like extremely good at LR you could do six plus six plus four. But in this case generally what we do is we leave one of the two six questions and try to do the remaining three sets. In this particular case, said that you should have left was the puzzles one, which was very hard. It would have taken you some time to actually solve. It was not easy at all. And especially the uh, between the two uh, six questions, said the team qu uh, selection question I th think was pretty doable. Especially it was like a standard team selection question. Essentially there because you have to enumerate the cases, there is a chance that you might go wrong in enumeration and if you go wrong in enumeration of one case, one particular type, your many of your answers uh, become wrong in response to that. But if you spend the time, if you spend 15-20 minutes on it, there is very good chance that you will do this set perfectly. So then the six uh, questions could have come from here. The charts question was super easy and you could have done it in 8 minutes. So those four questions would have, if you had done that, 6 plus 4 would have been a good enough attempt, attempt for this particular section because this was a difficult section because this four question puzzles was very difficult. So because it was difficult, your 6 plus 4 plus 4 became kind of improbable because this itself took 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes would have been gone in this puzzle, not 20 minutes, maybe I be, being unprepared, I put 20 minutes. But even if you were prepared, I don't think this could have been solved in entirety in under 15 minutes. And at 15 minutes of four questions, it is just not the 
right set to pick so in this case basically if you started with the puzzle you would have been lagging going behind in time you would have probably made it up with the charts question which was a easy question uh, easy set you could have done it in like 8 to 10 minutes and then you were left to choosing which of these two to actually attempt team selection or the 2d space lr the 2D space LR was also very difficult. The team selection was uh, less difficult and much more doable, much more standard as such, much more what people would have been used to doing. But if you were stuck over here and if you didn't have a whole lot of time, this is what you should have gone for because you could have solved individual questions out of it. While to even do one of the questions of team selection, it would have taken you at least 10 minutes. So from that, basically the ideal uh, uh, conclusion that you should draw is that you should have done the team selection first. If you uh, handle one of the two six question LR sets at the very start, then you actually hedge against the uh, scenario where one of the four question sets is unnecessarily hard or time consuming. So in that case, what I would, I, the ideal attempt would have been to start off with this, then do this and you would have six plus four done, that is 10 questions done, more than enough to clear the uh, cutoff and then try it some of the puzzle because if you had even partially filled the puzzle, you could have answered some questions from the puzzle and then done some questions from within the puzzle. So you would not have been able to solve all four questions, but two questions from the puzzle as such. Or you could have tried alternatively some questions from the 2D space LR, where again there were individual questions that you could have solved within the 2D space LR as such. So again here the order of attempting was very crucial, getting the order of attempt wrong made the uh, big difference in what, uh, what score you could have ideally gotten in this particular section. But again hard section with only 4 sets, the order of attempting also becomes super important, the uh, choice of sets also becomes super important. So always remember this should uh, in turn feed uh, like uh, affect the choice and the order in which you attempt sections in the actual cat. Remember that uh, if a puzzle seems harder, do not start with it. Try to start with one of the two six question sets and then go to probably to uh, the four question set or start off with the four question chart set because it's pretty easy and you know that in an eight to ten minutes you will have at least one set done and you will also feel confident because of it. Then you will have the confidence to go to the six question set. Always remember the order has to be deliberate, do not go with the first set that you see. Okay, So this is my analysis of LRDI and Quant for DC8, Maruti will be doing the analysis for Vobel. Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, we will be looking at the mock analysis for Dashcat 8. So let us get started with the Vobel section. In the Vobel section, there were uh, four reading comprehension sets, out of which I felt uh, there are three reading comprehensions which are definitely easy to medium to read and one uh, RC which was fairly difficult to read. Uh, it was also from a topic which I was not super interested in. So it took me a lot of time to actually understand or comprehend uh, the RC. So when I looked at uh, the four sets, I realized that uh, this was, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but this was about a movie which I have seen and really liked. So I knew that this was the set I am going to attempt first. And even the questions were fairly straightforward. Uh, they were based uh, on current affairs and the learnings that we have from the movie. So I found this RC to be a fairly easy RC. This was the first RC I attempted. And the first RC, I didn't take a lot of time to do it. I was able to have that momentum throughout the entire section. The second RC I attempted was a science and technology RC. Uh, science and technology, especially with respect to animals and plants, is something that I'm not super comfortable with. But this RC was uh, different from it because I found the RC and the passage to be quite interesting. So it is an again a not a very easy passage to read, but at least I was able to find interest in it. And even the questions were slightly tricky. I say this uh, as tricky because when I was looking at the questions, I had to again go back to the RC and uh, find out the passage or the paragraph from which the question was asked and double check which of them is actually correct. And this uh, RC also had some inference questions, so it took me some more time to actually answer them. The third RC I attempted was again an RC which I felt was slightly on the easier side. This was an RC which uh, I was able to read and understand quite thoroughly, probably because uh, of my earlier experience in the topic that this actually involved. So I was able to understand and uh, even empathize with uh, some of the things that were being said in the RC. The questions again were not very difficult. I think the questions only in the third RC were slightly tricky. In the second RC and in the fourth RC, I felt the passage was easy as well as the questions. The only RC which I felt was uh, fairly on the difficult side and it took me a lot of time to really understand was another science and technology RC. Uh, this was about algorithms and how you can use uh, machine learning to forecast better. Uh, I had a lot of uh, difficulty in actually reading it. Even if I was reading it, I had to read it multiple times. But luckily, I left it to the end. This was the last RC I attempted. 
and even though I didn't do too well, it did not spoil my section. So normally when I attempt a verbal section, I first try to get two RCs right. Here I first attempted the second RC and the third RC. Then I took some break and I went to the verbal section. The verbal ability questions, because my brain was not very tired uh, from the first two RCs which I was able to sail through, I had uh, enough concentration left and I used it uh, to do the para jumbles. The three para jumbles uh, I think were definitely on the medium side. They were not very difficult, they were not very easy. And after finishing the three pages, I went to the fourth RC. Once this was done, I came back to the verbal section and I finished the para summaries and the odd one out. In the odd one out, I felt there was one easy one and one difficult one. The reason I say this to be easy is because in odd one out, when you are given five uh, sentences and you have to figure out which one doesn't fit into the para jumble, normally I don't try to solve the entire PJ. What I try to do is I try to see if there are any sentences which work in pairs. That is if I know that okay third sentence comes immediately after the fourth sentence or second sentence comes immediately after the fifth sentence. Then I know that both of them belong to the para jumbles. Then both of them will not be the answer. But in this particular case the easy odd one out that I was talking about I was able to actually figure out the para jumble where I figured out that for example okay uh, 3, 2, 4, 1 is the order and therefore the fifth sentence is the odd one out. So that kind of a understanding I was able to get for one of the odd one outs. So that I felt to be easy and the next one for some reason uh, I was not able to make head or tail in it. So that was uh, one OOC which I felt was slightly on the difficult side. The para summary were definitely on the medium side but the length of the para uh, graphs that were given were not very long. Sometimes in uh, paragraphs uh, you tend to lose focus but here because uh, the paragraphs that were given were not too long for me to actually identify the summaries was not extremely difficult. And also in para summaries when I was uh, having difficulty in identifying uh, which of the two options are correct, I was able to rule out uh, a few options, say a couple of options in every question. But when I had to make the final choice between two options, I took time to actually figure out how each of these two options are different from one another. So in either, uh, in one of the options either some additional information was given which is not true or in one of the options some important information was not given. So using the difference between the two options also I was able to identify some of the answers. So overall I would say this is definitely an easy to medium section. The reason I call this to be easy to medium is because uh, like I said before the RCs were definitely on the easier side and once you get uh, one or two RCs uh, done fast you are not very tired you have a good start and then you, that start and that momentum will flow through the entire section. Overall somebody who is attempting to score a very high percentile should be targeting 40 plus in this section. Somebody who is looking for a respectable score, a good score should be targeting 30 plus in this section.